can get very cold. And that wasn't the only problem. Quite apart from the perishing cold, taking photographs of distant stars was a really tricky business. First of all, you had to take a photographic plate like this one, a great heavy thing, mount it in the back of the telescope, line up the telescope precisely on the tiny patch of sky you wanted, then take out the dark slide like this to expose the film to the light coming in, and then track your star for hours and hours. Because if you didn't keep exact track of it, your picture would be all fuzzy, and you'd have to start all over again. But when the mighty 100-inch telescope was pointed at the nebulae, it became plain that they were not just gas, but clouds of stars, millions of them. And this set off another debate. Were these clouds of stars part of our galaxy, or were they separate galaxies far, far beyond the Milky Way? Hubble photographed more than 500 nebulae. He saw they came in different shapes, spirals and ellipses. They seemed big enough to be called galaxies, but how far away were they? Were they part of the Milky Way or out there on their own? Most astronomers firmly believed that the Milky Way was the only galaxy. They were led by Harlow Shapley of Harvard University. On one hand, we have the astronomer Harlow Shapley, a Harvard astronomer, who said that the Milky Way galaxy is all there is. Think about it. In the night sky, you see this swath of light cutting across the sky called the Milky Way. And this Harvard astronomer says, that's the universe. That's all there is. The universe is nothing but the Milky Way galaxy. Well, here comes Edwin Hubble, who tries to settle the question. How big is the universe anyway? Shapley and his colleagues didn't like Hubble. They mocked his English accent and thought he was a, a bit of a snob. But the rivalry spurred Hubble on. For night after night, he peered out through his telescope and took photographs of one of the largest nebulae in the constellation of Andromeda. When he compared the photographs, he noticed something remarkable. And this is one of the very photographs that Hubble himself took on the 6th of October, 1923. He wrote the date on it. If you look, it's a negative. Normally, when you look up, you see the stars bright against a black sky, but they're rather hard to pinpoint. And if you print them this way around, a negative, it's easier to pinpoint the stars, and so they're black against a white background. But what really excited him was this up here. Between these two black lines, there's a tiny dot, and he's marked it VAR with an exclamation mark. VAR means variable star. The reason he was excited is that variable stars are, are pulsating balls of gas that go bright, dim, bright, dim, with a regular cycle. And although he had no means of finding out how far away these nebulae were, he did have a method of finding out the distance to a variable star. The maths is complicated. Astronomers spend more time doing sums than looking at the stars. But in brief, once Hubble had found this variable star and had studied how bright it was and how long it took to go from bright to dim, he was able to work out how far away it was. And the answer he came up with was two million light years. That's something like 40 times further away than anything in the Milky Way. Obviously, it was a totally different part of the universe. It was proof that the universe was far, far bigger than his rivals had claimed. But before he published his findings, Hubble wrote to his rival Shapley to tell him what he had found. He must have been terrified that Shapley would find some fault with his calculations. But when Shapley got the letter, he simply said, this letter has destroyed my universe. Hubble had shown that the universe was far vaster than anyone had imagined and contained not one but countless galaxies. Tell me, what are all these dishes for? These dishes pick up radio signals from very distant extragalactic objects, objects outside our own galaxy. Many modern observatories study distant galaxies by picking up their radio signals. But Hubble didn't have a radio telescope. 
It was by studying the light from galaxies that he made his next great discovery. Astronomer Mike Hobson explained that the wavelength of the light Hubble saw appeared to have been stretched. Its frequency was shifted towards the red end of the spectrum. This could happen only if the galaxies were travelling away from us. Every galaxy he looked at had what's called a red shift, a shift to the red, which meant that it was moving away from us. And more importantly, he found that the speed with which they're moving away from us was directly proportional to the distance they were away. So, so the ones a long way away were moving very quickly. Indeed, that's right. And that is known as Hubble's law. What Hubble found was an expanding universe, one in which all the galaxies, these are meant to be galaxies, not stars, were moving apart from one another. And this idea of an expanding universe was something that most scientists found very hard to accept. Hubble's ideas were so revolutionary and shocking that many people began to maybe perhaps disbelieve that the universe could be expanding or have an origin. But then here comes Einstein, perhaps the greatest scientist of, of the age, who comes in and says, yes, this is what my equations actually say. Einstein had always been puzzled that his calculations seemed to show that the universe must be expanding or contracting. He thought he must have made a mistake. He was delighted when Hubble's observations showed he'd been right all along. Hubble gave us an entirely new picture of the universe, an expanding universe, a universe where stars and galaxies are moving away from us. But that begs the question, where did the universe come from? Think of a motion picture, a motion picture of an explosion with all the gases moving away. Now run that motion picture backwards. When you run it backwards, you can actually calculate the time at which all these gases came from a single point. And that's what Hubble was inevitably forced to conclude. The fact that there was an origin, a time at which the universe came into being. And with Hubble's calculation, he could even give us a number, the age of the universe itself. Hubble's idea of an expanding universe suggests that it may have been formed initially in some cataclysmic explosion. And this wonderful telescope here was built specifically to listen to the echoes of that Big Bang. The latest estimates, based on Hubble's original theory, suggest that the Big Bang happened about 15 billion years ago. The universe is absolutely vast. What are the chances that somewhere out there there are some intelligent creatures, maybe, maybe a bit like us. Well, in our own solar system, it, it seems unlikely, but recent discoveries suggest that just possibly, out there somewhere, there may be intelligent life. If there are any intelligent creatures out there, they're not going to come in spaceships, because the distances are just colossal. What's much more likely is that they'll send radio signals to try and communicate. And that's why radio astronomers are listening out with those great huge dishes to try and pick up radio signals from outer space. So far, alas, they haven't heard a thing. But there's a small chance life could be found closer to home. There are now plans to send probes to Jupiter's moon Europa, where underwater volcanoes may be warming the sea, creating suitable conditions for life miles beneath the frozen surface. So keep listening. Maybe one day an alien will call, possibly from a submarine.